same violence and all the kind of violence. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. To this hour, Mayor Andre Dickens is taking a victory lap after announcing violent crime is significantly down in Atlanta. The mayor says our numbers are so good, we ranked third in the United States for a drop in crime. Fox Live's Angelique Proctor joins us from Salem Bible Church in Zone 1 with all the details. Angelique. What did I tell you guys? I, my last video... Literally, my last video, I told you that they were going to tell you that the crime is dropping, the crime's decreasing. And here you have my man, Andre Dickens, right? Georgia Tech graduate, telling us that we rank third in, in crime decrease. See, the way that they're evaluating these numbers guys they're basically saying hey all right last year we did these numbers this year we were less in these numbers right but the reality is they're taking that percentage change and then you know um extracting that percentage change and extrapolating that across the country and then saying oh well here our our numbers decreased this year but, but has a crime really gone down in the A? No. Maybe you had a couple less murders this year than you did last year. <laughs> but it's getting ridiculous now, and they want to lie in our face. Don't let them. Good afternoon, Alex. This is significant news for the city of Atlanta. Now, this news conference was deliberately held here at Salem Bible Church in Zone 1, the zone that Mayor Andre Dickens lives in, because this is the zone that had the greatest reduction in crime. Now, the mayor says that violent crime is down because so many people in the community, including organizations, nonprofits, police, and parents, are all working on it. Now, Mayor Dickens says the crime reduction approach is what he calls a group project. The police chief said major crimes are down 15%, including homicides being down 21% and rapes <laughs> down 50%. Now, the mayor acknowledged the sacrifices and great work of the Zone 1 officers and said this proves the year of the youth was much more than a talking point. So you hear what he said, the year of the youth, was much more than a talking point, but in reality, the youth aren't getting better in Atlanta. It's actually feeling like they're getting worse. And I can show you prime examples of this. So he can laud these numbers all that he wants, but it's, it's just not cutting it for me. It's just not cutting it. We ended this year with citywide major crimes against people down more than 15%, and that includes homicides being down more than 20%. So he's saying crimes against people are down, right? So we're not talking about property crimes here, which I'd be interested to see those numbers, but you know all the numbers that they use, they're, a lot of times they're going to exaggerate them, up or down, depending on what narrative they want to spin. That's this time last year. That is quite a significant change of events to be able to reduce crime that much. It takes the faith community, the business community, the, the nonprofits, individuals, parents, etc. I'm not gonna lie though, the suit is sharp. To pull this off. Now, you may be wondering what areas of crimes increase. That was car thefts. But the police chief says that guns, gangs, and drugs will continue to be the focus. That was the focus in 2023, and that will continue to be the focus in 2024. Mm. We are live in Southwest Atlanta. Anjali. So, um, you know, hopefully these numbers make people feel more safe. I would still say stay on guard. But... Like I said, we got a long ways to go before we get to even pre-2020 crime rates. 
Proctor, Fox 5 News. Yeah, according to those numbers, things are looking up, Angelique. Thank you. But we begin tonight in southwest Atlanta, where a shooting left one man dead, two others hospitalized. Good evening, I'm Russ Spencer. I'm Courtney Bryant. Tonight, police are trying to find the shooters. Fox 5's Denise Dillon is live at APD headquarters with more. And Denise, the shooting happened in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, and in the middle of an intersection. Woo, the middle of the afternoon, the middle of an intersection. The super gremlins are on demon time. And it's uh, it's really interesting. The boldness, okay. The emboldened super gremlin has struck again. All right, and we saw in our previous live stream that that was the case when uh, the brother uh, Diobra Redden did the Superman over the over the uh, podium over the bench and attacked the judge. And we're seeing that in Atlanta, where you have these super gremlins shooting up the intersection in broad daylight. Ralph David Abernathy and Windsor, as you said, it was in the afternoon, a little after two. And now the search is on for the gunman. I just heard gunshots sounded like I thought it was fireworks because they've been shooting fireworks all weekend. When Kenesha King walked out of her house, a young man was on her porch. He had been shot. Two other men were in her yard. They also had bullet wounds. All were rushed to the hospital. One of them, a 19 year old, died from his injuries. Mm. The shooting appears to be targeted. Atlanta Police Homicide Commander Lieutenant Jermaine Dearlove says this was a drive-by shooting. We believe the suspects were inside of a vehicle. That's going to be a white sedan. The three men between the ages of 19 and 21 tried to run for safety. They only made it a few yards to this home before they collapsed. Investigators spent hours talking to witnesses and collecting bags of evidence at the scene. This is a very serious matter for us. Uh so you got three people clapped up most likely participating in the op culture. This is uh, a very normal thing. Uh, we have our top unit on the Atlanta Police Department investigating it, and we will find these people involved. <laughs> Word of the shooting quickly spread through the neighborhood. I went to school with all three of them. We grew up together, and I just feel like it's sad. Please stop killing and put the guns down. It's just not the neighborhood, it's just the world. Too many guns. So here you go. They blaming the guns again. But what about the mentality of the individuals wielding the gun? Because I could have a gun right here on my desk and I ain't going to do nothing to nobody. But these super gremlins are on demon time. There's guns for no reason. And investigators know the gunmen were in a white sedan thanks to surveillance video from a nearby business. Now they have to find that car and the people who were in it. Reporting live at APD headquarters, Denise Stillen, Fox 5 News. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's your boy, Jenquavius Jackson, and you already know I'm demonetizing Shadow Band in this bitch. So if you want to contribute, go to the Cash App, the PayPal, the GoFundMe, or join the Patreon. Also, don't forget to visit the merch store for all your favorite BGZM News 17 gear, including our exclusive Trump is a Blood t-shirt. Go fast before they sell out. They are already flying off the shelves, no cap. And remember, these super gremlins are on demon time. Friends. Now, a Channel 2 Action News exclusive family, friends, and colleagues are remembering 27-year-old John Goodwin. Someone killed the Fulton County Middle School teacher over the weekend. God. And this is the second teacher in Atlanta that we've lost within the last three months. I did a story on another teacher. And, you know, he had dreads as well. And he was taken out after a fight, after a night out on the club. Oh, man. I'm telling you guys, refrain from large gatherings in the community. I've been saying this. It, it, it's just not safe right now. You need to get cover. You need to duck. Because these super gremlins are on 
Demon time. Well, just Michael Seiden is live at Clark Atlanta University, where Michael, the teacher, earned two degrees from there, and he also attended church services on the campus. Yeah, Wendy, you know, John Goodwin was a man of faith. In fact, he was here at Clark Atlanta University, and former classmates tell me that John was known for giving inspirational and impactful sermons, some of those happening right here in the student center. Now, after graduating... Mm. So not only was he a teacher trying to impact the community in a positive way, he was a pastor, a man of faith, a man of the claw, and he was teaching the word of God. And sadly, that has come to an end. <clears throat> I've been saying over and over again that the worst of us are taking out the best of us. And this is another prime example. We need some type of movement in the community. Otherwise, it ain't going to be much of us left at this point. We got a lot of good brothers getting whacked out who want to do something who want to change who are attempting to help people and you know do things for others put someone above themselves but it just seems like there is an effort to get rid of all the good brothers in the community by other super it, it's crazy situation he continued to get back to his campus now those who knew him want to know why someone would take his life it was a complete shock the principal of renaissance middle school in fairburn consumed by shock and grief after she learned that one of her beloved teachers 27 year old john goodwin was murdered in atlanta over winter break he was a great guy um got along with everyone all of our students faculty and staff Everyone loved him. Investigators say it all happened on December 30th. That's when Atlanta police responded to a reported shooting on Southwood Boulevard and Highway 166. When officers arrived, they found Goodwin suffering from a gunshot wound. He was later pronounced dead at the scene. 24 hours later, police issued murder arrest warrants for Denisha Rosser. She's currently in jail in South Carolina, awaiting extradition to Fulton County. Damn, so he was killed by a woman. Possibly the woman that he was dealing with or maybe somebody he met to hook up with. I don't know But damn who would have thought These super sister gremlins are on demon time where she'll face charges right now police aren't releasing a motive It's also unclear if the two are in a relationship But court records show that they once lived together in an Atlanta apartment mm. So they did know each other before and this is what i keep telling you guys these domestic violence situations are heating up yes we got through the holidays but there's another one on the way and it, it's just despicable what is happening and what has happened to modern day relationships and the masculinity in the women in the women have emboldened emboldened them to take a man or or men in their lives life so it's 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 very disheartening very concerning a lot of these women have a wicked spirit and you have to do vetting okay and he probably was trying to see the good in her trying to fix her and she wasn't having it i don't know what their dispute was about but it just appears that she crashed out and what will happen is she'll probably try and play the victim since she's the only one left to tell the story back at renaissance middle school heartfelt stories about the impact goodwin made on his community he facilitated our barrel of love initiative this past thanksgiving where we um distributed 50 thanksgiving baskets to families within our community so our students created cards um, for Mr. Goodwin and his family, which we will present to the family at his memorial service. Mm. Yeah, guys, speaking of that memorial, the family's released information about the service. We have posted it all on our website right now, wsbtv.com. 
We are live on the Clark Atlanta University campus. I'm Michael Seiden, Channel 2 Action News.